And no direction control. No thrusters. Hey, Jacob, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I'm accessing here the ship house uh, directory for the steel cam uh -huh. data, and I I refresh the, the page here, and I still don't see the folder for the previous dive, 1987, uh, where we dove at, uh, at the whale bone site. Was that earlier to the one earlier today? That yeah, finished up earlier today? It might not yeah. have finished uploading uh, yet? Or? Um, yeah, that's that's more of Justin's territory. That's more okay. of Justin's. I yeah. know that kind of it kind of takes, it takes some time, time. but oh, um, okay. that is a question for Justin. I don't know e good. the exact answer. I have a few questions, if it's okay to ask. But yeah, yes. Okay, so um, hi team. I don't. I think this one, the starfish that rolled up on the instrument last dive. What became of it? when it reached the surface. Does the effects of pressure affect it? Um, I was here during the dive, but I was not here during the retrieval of the plath of the oil, oil wood experiment, so I don't know. I've, actually, I think that nobody mentioned it, so I don't think the sea star made it back to the surface. It, it actually did. It, it was did? On, yeah. Yeah. It was on the dive prior to the last dive. Okay, and yeah. you guys know what? What was the I, end of it? I don't know what uh, happened to it. I saw him taking was taken pictures away. of it, but I do not know if it ended up back in the ocean or yeah. in a specimen. They, it depends on, uh, yesterday we were at uh, nine, eight hundred and seventy meters at the Mideast where, where we recovered the whale bones and wood. Uh, they, they make it to the surface um, and they can sometimes survive. Uh, especially echinoderms that if you put them back in the water they they should be okay uh, there were a number of an anemones on the um, on the that came up on the on the platform on the yeah, platform and they became albatross food <laughs> threw them overboard bunch of snails too yeah, snails. We recently recovered a BPR from Cascadia, I believe, and that one also had a sea star attached to it that just wouldn't let go till it was on the surface. And I believe we did throw it back into the water. Mm. It's, I don't know what state it was in, but it was returned to the sea. Sometimes that some, some organisms that don't have a lot of um, they're just filled with liquid. Their tissues are just, they don't have any air. Like mm. some fish, they have air bladder or uh, um, swimming bladder, sorry. And those suffer a bit more, the, the changes in pressure when you bring them to the surface. A lot of deep sea animals, they're adapted to those high pressures by having all their organisms filled with liquid, a lot of water, so it, yeah, there's traffic jam sensitivity when the pressure changes, but sometimes they, if they survive, you can put them back in the water, they will, they'll be okay. I mean, if anyone from Fish and Wildlife is watching, uh, this fish really is doing pretty well. <laughs> They don't really, you know, they run into the ground sometimes, but they don't really run into each other. They kind of just like. S I don't need to talk about that one. Just ran into his brother. Like oh, that one of, just ran into one. Kind of funny, hurting, uh, hurting fish here. I mean, looking at the Atlanta view. Atlanta's view is absolutely stunning. Yeah, bro. So cool. Um. Hi, team. Oh, wait. I'll wait for Nav to be done. I want to see this in Ahi off of Hawaii. Do you think that's possible? Somewhere, yeah. Yes, it is possible. As long as we tell all the fishermen to stop fishing. <laughs> for like five years. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> what a lot of deep sea species feel when they bring them to the surface, they change in temperature, which is, it could be, here we're talking about less than a kilometer. Um, so 
they resist a bit more, but yeah, if we bring species from the abyssal plains or even deeper um, trenches. Uh, Our temp probe reads five degrees Celsius right now. Yeah. Um, so, what is it, like 15 at the surface or something like the that? The fish yeah. have accepted us as one of their own. <laughs> Hercules <laughs> is now a fish. <laughs> we are part of their school. We new are blending students. in very well. New students to the school, eh? <laughs> um, hi team, I've been working on some paper editing and it's been awesome having your science and fun conversations up on the TV while I work. My question, how do you know where the transects are? I imagine Herc has a compass on board, but how do you get finer grained coordinates without GPS so deep in the sea? We use acoustic positioning with a USBO, which stands for ultra short baseline. So we can get fixes on the seabed to the vehicle. Um, and then based off of where the ship is, the GPS coordinates of the ship, we can uh, geolocate where the, where the ROVs are. So basically underwater GPS. Yep. yep. Yeah. Thank you. We don't have Siri telling us direction, so we haven't done that. Lynette's voice is much nicer. What about DVL? <laughs> oh, yes, we also use uh, DVL, so uh, that's the Doppler velocity log, um, and that allows us to get accurate um, velocity estimates over ground with the vehicle, so that, instead of pointing up towards the ship, that points down towards the ground, and again, that uses uh, acoustics to determine how fast we're moving, and if you know how fast we're moving, you know how far you move over a certain uh, period of time, so you can use that for dead reckoning position. And I'm going to step forward. And I'm going to come up a little bit. So we use a combination of sensors to figure out where we are. So in, so we don't get USB-L fixes every, you know, it's every few seconds or something. Um, so in between our USB-L fixes, we're using dead reckoning to determine where we're moving. So. Um, it's good in the short term, but over time it tends to drift. So you use the USB-L position to correct for that drift. And so it's a combination of those two things. Cool. Thank you, Jake. That's awesome description. What's your favorite type of fish? It might be the sable fish now. <laughs> mahi mahi. Brother over here has got s stuck on poke, eh? Angler, <laughs> angler fish. Angler fish. Shana cops. Or Shana cops. Yeah. Uh, uh, the question is, what's our favorite kind of fish to eat or just to look at? Or I know, yeah. Or favorite kind of fish, period. Because there's differences. Yeah. I would need an angler fish. What's the Hawaiian fish that has a really cute name? Umu umu nuku nuku. Umu umu nuku nuku apua. Apua. The state that's fish. A, that's my favorite fish. It's a really cute little reef fish. Those r those fish scare me because I feel like if I bit. hang out with them too much, they're gonna like chase me when I'm swimming. They're kind of little jerks. <laughs> 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 the umu umu nuku nuku apua. Yeah. The little puas. They're so mean. They're territorial. Yeah. They're likened to the their I uh, their land counterpart is a pig. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the doesn't their name mean like the fish with the face of a pig or something? Well, the last word pua, pua. is pig in Hawaiian. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll do it. So Jake, I was trying to keep you about twenty-five meters off ground, mm. off uh, bottom okay. on the. Uh, Atlanta. I know it's a little short in the delta, but yeah, it Tether looks like it's flat bottom. It's staying happy. Trailing out trader behind. fish. Yeah. yeah. We got enough speed that the Tether's got a nice curve to it. Yeah. It's got a long beak like the. Like and the it's got a really good view. They eat the reef, right? They eat the. I believe uh, so. Parrot like, fish like eat a, the like reef. A, well, that's what Google's telling me Umu Umu is. Oh, okay. That As makes a, sense. Um, Lynette, your favorite fish? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. 
not Humo. There we go. <laughs> to be like goldfish. Narrow it down by one. I don't know. Um, I'd have to think about it. I mean, I like the clownfish because they're very funny. Dory. Nemo. <laughs> I really want to watch the new Finding Demo Nemo again and the new uh, Happy Feet again. There's a new Happy Feet? I think there's a number three or a I, number four. A number three or number four? I missed the second one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, maybe a second one. I could be wrong. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll just put Finding Nemo on one of these screens. We'll just watch Finding Nemo while we're here swimming with, uh, with all the fish. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how do you count the fish when they're when they are the same ones following the whole following for the whole survey? You don't. <laughs> uh, very good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of biasing when when you have attraction. You have the effects of the ROV, either avoiding or uh, attra attracted by the R ROV lights or, or engine noise or, or props. So you, you often discount, you just ignore them. You count all the other stuff, or then you can make a sort of estimate of the abundance at one point, and yeah, it's very hard to... Especially looking at the Atlanta here. Oh my god, it's like, <laughs> I think it's probably yeah, like thousands, of, a movie. thousands yeah. of fish, I don't know. Uh, several hundreds. I'm like waiting for the moment that they turn into a big fish ball and it turns into like a frenzy. Yeah. Yeah, seeing a predation event, that'd be pretty crazy. Just see a whale come in and just sweep them all up. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, we did see a whale way off towards the horizon earlier. Oh, a crab. crab. Mr. Crab. Mr. Krabs. Who owns the crab? Pink urchin. So actually in this direction here, we're entering an area of bottom trawling. So oh. will, will we see in the sonar very clearly any bottom trawl marks? Okay. Yeah, Deep grooves in the sediment. Want to come up on the tether and hold it? Oh, it's easy. We can go 25, 30 meters. Those are depths of the adult tuna crabs. What we see in our cameras in, in Barclay Canyon, they are more like juvenile ones. They're not as big. Definitely not a boring watch. Oh. <laughs> Forgot to put a step forward. Sorry about that. I love how in every underwater camera we have, there are fish. Like every single camera. How many is that? Oh, except for the one that has the gauges. No, you can see fish behind them. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Did you see the fish at the surface last night? I saw video footage yeah. of it. And dolphins and sharks. It was quite something. Very cool. What are how many miles these fish travel in a day? Like, I kind of want to just like stick a tracking beacon on one of them and follow it around. We actually had that idea of tracking some and see if we could 
locate them in between our nodes. We have cameras at 400 meters, at 600, and 800 and 900 meters. Oh. Actually, we, yeah, we do analysis of the eel. Um, we have the cameras record uh, every hour for five minutes. So we can, with the synchronization of all those cameras, we can see that they're migrating in between sites because of how the abundance shifts throughout the day and actually throughout the seasons as well. I, I did my master's work on acoustic fish tags. and Oh, nice. Uh, there's a whole network of them up and down the east coast of the United States, and yeah. there's, there's certain tagged fish that will travel thousands of miles within a year, all the, all the way up and down the coast. Yeah, actually, with this fish acoustic experiment, we have seen a couple of uh, tagged fishes, actually, on camera. How long of a transect are we wanting to do here? Are we doing a thousand meters? Yeah, that was the, instead of doing like the bend ones, mm -hmm. bent ones, yeah. we go the same direction, one kilometer. Okay. And I guess we can recover and do the vertical transect to the surface. Got it, okay. Just keep swimming. Bridge nav. Can we have another one zero zero meters zero four five? Thank you. I think Dan checked out. Either that or he had three pints of ice cream. What kind of fish this fish eats? Um, I've seen them uh, biting on red tail fish sometimes, like the macurids. Uh, they have been, they sometimes are scavengers, like we, we had bait. Uh, so they're predators slash scavengers, depending on the conditions, I guess, or availability. I'll see that he just munched yeah, on, just on something there. Mm. One of them, like uh, invertebrates. They also eat stuff from the sediments. What are they these little urchins? I would say more like polychaetes and other crustaceans. Are these pink things urchins? Yeah, those are pink urchins. That we just published a paper after seven years of imagery from, from the upper slope site. We are noticing they are migrating upwards towards oh. shallower water. They are trying to avoid the oxygen minimum zone. It's like we just got into yeah, the depth uh, yeah, zone. Yeah. They just all of a sudden appeared. So we use trawl data from the Department of Fisheries, like 14 years of trawl data and seven years of our observatory uh, data from the upper slope location. And yeah, we found that there, first they, re they quickly reacted to the marine heat waves that we saw earlier in oh, uh, yeah. 2013, between 13 and, 15 and 16. They basically disappeared because we didn't have uh, like the, the kelp forests and the phytoplankton production decreased substantially during those marine heat waves. And they munch on the tritos uh, falling really from the surface. Yeah. And then the spatial data gave us, uh, we are seeing that they were caught on trawls and throughout 14 years we saw them they have a depth range, right? They occur from 400, or even shallower, but 300 to, let's say, 1,200 meters. And they are each year occurring at shallower depths. I think so we, we just got to about 600 meters, and they popped up. Bones yeah. And, uh, so the oxygen minimum zone is expanding, is shoaling, and they are, this was seen also off California, the same species kind of migrating upwards as this creeping oxygen minimum zone expands. It's kind of scary. Yeah. 
That's yeah. a that's a straight up like um, effect of climate change, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the oxygen minimum zone is related to yeah the decrease in oxygen interior ocean oxygen levels are related to climate. Um, and then there's all kinds of other there the oxygen minimum zone you often has have corrosive waters and um, so you have low pH lower pH than average and that affects their their carapace like the the tests of the urchin they become thinner uh, which is that's a consequence of ocean acidification mm. so then they their fitness they're less fit to survive in the environment have we got any still cam shots of all of this um, I think Dirk was on I can be Taking some clicks. Thank you. Dirk abandoned his post. Will everyone on this cruise be on the next expedition too? No. There will just be a couple of people that are on this expedition continuing on to the next. Anyone from this room? Oh, yes. I know who it is. Lynette. It's me. Yeah, ah. I'll be staying. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. I'll see you in Hawaii. Yes. Uh -oh. Can't wait. Um, Marley, she will be staying on. Who else? I think that's it. I think it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. <laughs> and you guys are going to be expedition leaders. It's so oh. exciting. <laughs> so is Daniel uh, Wagner also joining? That looks like uh, uh, some no, sort of net or gear so. or something. Yeah, yeah. That's, <coughs> that's our first piece of evidence of fishing. A baby fish. It was an itty bitty one. Uh, that looks like it. Marine debris, perhaps. I don't know. I what think are these? Those are drop stones. Drop stones. Drop stones. They're crazy looking with all those brittle stars. This really m makes me want to watch those two movies I mentioned earlier. Happy Feet. Finding and Nemo? Finding Dory, I think it's called. But yeah, Finding Nemo, like, take part two or something. This makes me want to watch SpongeBob. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Who's porous and yellow and... I don't know the next one. Bridge Nav. One zero 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 four five, please. That's a different looking fish. You. That's a different looking fish. It's like flat and it's like Whoa. eating things on the ground. It's like reddish. What are you? Bye. We've made it 500 meters. One of these days halfway. Whoa, 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 whoa. Going to the light, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong way. This is a one-way road fish. You went against the one way. I like dog. Actually, it looks like they're turning. Are maybe, we turning or are they turning? Maybe they know something. We don't know. That's interesting. They all just started turning. Ooh, look at that spotted one. Maybe there's a huge shark coming up. That would be pretty awesome. So awesome. I remember my dives at the in the Pisces four and five in Hawaii. We were doing some bait experiments, and we were visited by six gill like six gill sharks. You probably know this, Danny. There is a video on on YouTube on this specific dive. 
Pisces 5 dive, I believe, where Jeff Drazen's in it. <laughs> and he was screaming about the size of the <laughs> of the shark. He said, like, holy macro or something like that. So the video got more hits because of his reaction to the... It was like a four meter uh, six gill shark. Wow. Very what is the crazy. significance of a six gill shark? Significance? Mm -hmm. um, They're like amazing. He's amazing, giant, ah, fat looking, and he has six uh, gill slits. It's level five, so it's a pretty ancient. Uh, the more gills, the more ancient. Uh, yeah, there's a lineage that's a very, very, um, very ancient. Cool. We had a swordfish attack uh, Pisces 5 on one of the final dives. A swordfish? Yeah, we uh, got part of its uh, sword still stuck in the hole. Oh. Uh, between the foam and the, the hole basing. Oh. It's still there. Yeah, took out took out the hydraulics and uh, oh my took God. out a couple oh uh, my goodness. of our oily hoses. And that's when Pisces was like, I need to retire now. No. <laughs> no, it was just on the final one. It was just on one of the uh, last expeditions. Had to put divers in the water on the way up to uh, secure the front porch and the arms because everything was just flopping around. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that thing caused some damage. That swordfish was down well, for the fight. Well, we fixed it, put it back in the water, and uh, I should say they fixed it. Bless you. Bless you. Good save. <laughs> My ears are still ringing from the last time. <laughs> <laughs> We're just causing this giant migration. Imagine if it was not quite the time for them to migrate. We're just like <laughs> <laughs> affecting their daily routine. <laughs> Wild. I'm telling you, we're just incognito. They don't even know we're here. <laughs> There's a part of me that feels like what are you guys' thoughts on this? So the amount of fish we're seeing, would you say it's kind of like the same amount of tinafores we saw, yet we were watching in the last dive maybe? I just feel like tinafores can't swim as well as these fishes, but I do feel like we saw so much tinafores. It's just that they're so transparent that you can't really see them unless you're like trying to focus on them. I think I'll still go with the fish. Yeah. But they are, they are very, last night we were inside the canyon and we have lots of, uh, that's an effect of the topographic, the topography of the canyon. It kind of traps all of organic matter and so there's a lot more life in the plankton normally inside the canyon. Yeah. Yeah, the fishermen in uh, Canada are watching our stream right now being, and writing down coordinates. That fish is like dead, like so still in the water. It's like... Mm -hmm. <sighs> fishermen in Canada? I don't know. Cool. Another question. The dolphins and fish that we were talking about, um, were they during a dive recovery? Last night? Yeah. No, they were, we were, it was during the dive, but they were at the surface. And mm. they were, so There's only phone footage of them. Yes, phone footage. Depending on what the haps is, maybe that footage will get onto a social media platform. I think AJ would be so stoked if that happened. He's been like waiting for one of his pictures to go up on one of the <laughs> social media platforms. Uh. Just imagine a pot boiling on your stove, but it being fish instead of water. And then add in like a, the a dolphin here and there. the ocean was boiling. It was crazy. 
Straight into the ground. There you go. What time was that? Uh, it was like a couple hours. It was like maybe 11 p.m. to 3, 3, 3 a.m. Wow. Yeah. 3, 4 a.m. We had this freezing fog. It was ice cold out there, but it, the whole did, ocean was boiling, and we'd hit it with a uh, spotlight. Spotlight? And, and they just go did all wow. jump and splatter, yeah. and the dolphins and sharks. And the dolphins would, like, herd them in close to the ship and, like, swoop in super fast. Awesome. I think the... the Bridge now. Oh. One zero 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 four five, please. Thank you. I'm so sad I missed it. That Me sounds too. so cool. Did you guys see that little little black fish? It marine reminded me of Toothless. Straight into the ground. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, oh! Oh, you saved it. Almost. That other one, I caught it though. I will Two now. Two How to Train Your Dragon? Yes, that one. I've got a plushie of him. Your plushie of him? Yeah. What does that mean? I like a stuffed, a stuffed oh. toothless. Oh, you have a plushie of him. Yeah. Roger that. From Build a Bear Workshop. Cool. I was just thinking that I actually really like toothless. I have uh, the Night Fury and the Light Fury. Oh, the black one and the white one. Yeah. Those are great movies. They really are. A hundred percent. Lynette, do you know what movies we're talking about? Completely no idea. Oh no my idea. gosh. Me neither. How to Train <laughs> Your Dragon? <laughs> what? Ah, oh, that is Jake, absurd. you're like two years older than me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never seen it. And you're younger than me. <laughs> God, I'm surrounded by a bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> Age is just a number. Life is filled with experiences. <laughs> Agreed. If you were born after 1996, you're too, old. you're too young. Well, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, at least I was born in the 19. I'm back in you're, the 1900s. Yeah, back in the f last century. Oh, what is that black-looking thing? That's it. Carl and Marfa's. It's funny. Dan calls it the turn of the century. And every time he says it, I think of like or the turn of the century being like 1900s. But then I forget that the turn of the century was literally 23 years ago. I feel so old. Ulrika's having a grand old time over there laughing at something. I, I must know what you're laughing at. I also don't need to know. You don't have to say anything. It's okay. In this case, I was laughing about the comment that the century turn is already 23 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let, let's do a round here. I think no one was born in the 70s here, except me, right? You were born in the 70s? Yeah, man. <laughs> you do not look that old. Actually, I like the whole numbering of this cruise, the dives. They started in <laughs> 1968. I and know, it's a space, it's a right? space era. Yeah. It's like the X, Generation X, and then we caught up with some millennials. Where are we on now, 1988? Uh, yep. 1988 is my birthday year, oh, so really? I like uh, the stuff, yeah. Yes. I, I had uh, Blue Data, I tried to play music from the uh, era of the dive number. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> That's cool. I was born in 1977. Ooh. The year Charlie Chaplin died. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look now, there's like a uh, shrimp krill, whatever. What are what are those? Like more shrimp stuff in the. What in else the water. happened in 1977? 1977 was Apollo. Uh, one of them. Skylab, I think. I think it was Skylab in 77. Star Wars. Oh I think yeah. The first Star Wars was 77, I think. I thought I saw a flounder off to the side, or was it a soul? Oh, okay, so either. Skylab was 73, but Skylab <coughs> was still in operations in 77. Mm -hmm. 
What significant thing it's happened in 1988, though? That's the question. The Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. Yeah. Right? There's some candy going by. Mm, video. Thank you. Oh, yeah, send it over this way. What was those originals? My grandma here? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tina Floor or not. I don't I mean, know. They're still delicious, but. Heck yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jaws, 1977. Ah, there you go. Jaws, the movie? Dun, dun. Apparently. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, 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 bum. They were playing that on the synthesizer earlier. It was like <laughs> so real. Who brought that synthesizer on board? AJ. AJ. Wow. Uh. AJ, is the AJ a DJ? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he is now. He looked like I a mean, DJ when we... With the hat, yeah? I mean, technically yeah. I'm a DJ. Are you? My initials. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you are. Benny J. <laughs> Whoa. It swam. Bridge nav. They like eating things in the ground. One zero 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 four five, please. Into the ground. Into the ground. Thank you. Oh, that was into the camera. Oh. I swear, this is like therapy. Mm -hmm. Just watching the fish swim. Just keep swimming. <laughs> It is very peaceful. Put some whale singing and this, and you will be sad for a good sleep. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. This would make a great swimming. screensaver. Yeah, bro. You should make that happen. I I could. Just put it on a loop for yeah, like just a 10-minute loop. A yeah, moving ten screensaver, yeah. just... Ten, we need a t high definition Bless ten you. minute loop and uh, distribute it to the crew. <laughs> I'll pull the ProRes files. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Get those deinterlacing ASAP. I've definitely been highlighting these. I'm trying to like hold myself back from not highlighting <laughs> it too much. When you think about it, well, what better way could you end a, a cruise than just watch a bunch of fish? It's a great way to end a cruise. Final dive. Supposedly. The Great Migration is where it all ended for some. Bruh, I totally wish we had like some nets on the side of our vehicles that they would just like swim into and then they would come up for it with us and that would be like an epic way to end <coughs> some fresh See the fish and chips. The fish was just munching on, on the ground. <coughs> yeah. How far have we gone? 400 meters. I don't know. How far have we gone? Everyone take a guess. I'm <laughs> guessing... 300. No, you went more. I was going to say 647. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, was it? I like that. I'll say oh. 620. Have we gone thus Pri far? Price is right rules. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go over. 
701. I changed my mind because I thought we were going after the 500 meter mark, but we're including the 500 meter mark. Mm -hmm. Yep, including the 500 meter mark. And how long? How much? How long we've gone? Okay. Yeah. So fun facts about things that happened in 1988. <laughs> Floppy disks were a thing. Ronald Weasley, Rupert Grant, and Adele were born. Oh. Uh, the Netherlands became con the second con country connected to the internet. Uh, table tennis became an Olympic sport. Yes, table tennis. And Stephen tennis. Hawking released the bestseller, A Brief History of Time. Hmm. Mm. 88, you said? That was 88. 715 meters. Okay. Did everyone submit their guesses? Yes. Mel and I win. Oh, <gasps> oh yes. How close. <laughs> uh, we had gone 750 meters. Wow. Dang. She's reading somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was guesstimationing. Just like remembering how many times she called the bridge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. I had a not so great sleep before this watch and I'm tired, yo. <laughs> Good thing you can sleep in in the morning. Hey. Great. What are all these pink squishies? Urchins. Pink urchins. Oh, the pink squishies. Mm, they're probably not very squishy. Oh, those would be good to count with. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. Pervert, uh, those are the guys moving up shallower, as in the past two decades. They too are migrating. Fathom that or something. Oh they? look, there's a lot more sea stars now. Or are they yeah. brittle stars? Or are they one and They're the same? They're brittle stars. Hello, fish. Sablefish, cod, gray, textured. <laughs> yeah. Now. One zero 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 four five, please. Thank you. <laughs> it's kind of funny seeing them get stuck up against the camera. If you look in this, I think that's the back of Atalanta or something, yeah. and like those fish are really like, they're they're like just there. They like really like just yeah. smush up against. They the totally camera. do, <laughs> and they look like they're so confused. They're like, where do we go? That you know what that reminds me of when you're like walking in the airport and you're trying your best to walk as fast as you can to your gate, mm -hmm. and then there's that like slow couple in front of you, and you're like. Bleh. I need <laughs> to get past you. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a fast lane and a slow lane in airports. There absolutely should please. be. Please. Universe, make it happen, please. And I then mean, there kind of is when you get the uh, walkway, the moving walkways, and then the not moving walkways. Oh my God! When people go on those moving walkways and stand still and yeah. don't walk, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> I am hurt. You just want to shove them out of the way. So you just get right behind them and just act really impatient, mm -hmm. and then maybe they'll start moving. You get right behind them and start tapping your foot. E exactly. Yeah, bro. <clears throat> 
They don't <laughs> realize me. those are for you to increase your speed by four, uh, at least by four. They, they're, they're settled on just standing there. It's okay. We're f going faster anyway. So, but if you walk on that thing, you just arrive to your gate on time. Excuse me, uh, please uh. move to the side. Wow. What's this going is for on me now? to walk faster. Traffic jam. It looks like the pink squishy things are growing bigger. But I could be tripping. Yeah, I was going through PDX uh, in the beginning of the year, and they had like maintenance on all of the fast walkways. And that was horrible because it was it felt like miles. And I'm just looking at these things, they're all broken. And I've got to walk with all four of my bags and was not happy. Oh, flounder. Lynette, have you thought about the, your favorite type of fish to look at? Mm. No, I was hoping you'd forget. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get off that easy. <laughs> Maybe like a trumpet fish? That's I have no cool idea one. what that fish looks like. It's it's long like and trumpet. skinny. You like a trumpet? <laughs> it could be like koi. Because who doesn't like koi? Lots of those are shark's cove. Oh. Wow. Just like reach out with the manipulator arm and grab on. I bet we could. <laughs> you know, when it's a game of odds and uh, statistics, we have a pretty good chance of grabbing one. You know, baited remotely operated vehicle. Don't even need to. Just reach out and grab one. Open the toolbox. We'll shove it in there. <laughs> Fish are friends. And food. <laughs> Ooh, that was cool. <laughs> you said that, and that one attacked the other fish. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lynette. <laughs> so that one got something. I'm just going to confirm with Dirk if we can recover right after this. Can you imagine seeing like a traumatic event right now where a shark just comes in and just rips a fish apart right in the middle think of the game? That would one? make my cruise. That would be the greatest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. What? Wait, what? What? <laughs> if a shark just came in, is what Danny said. Like that would. And just like started tearing his fish apart right in front of us. <laughs> like. That's insane. <laughs> that would go so viral. That'd be a great highlight. <laughs> okay, so we need a, the thing about making things go viral is that it has to have good audio to it. So Absolutely. Oh, we've, we've got a oh, goal. Oh. I mean, just look at what happened when they found the, um, the Kraken. <laughs> the Kraken. No, no, it was a sperm whale. It was a sperm whale. Yep. Uh, People were just amazed by the sperm whale. Yeah. That was the Gulf of Mexico. And the audio track for it is perfect. Yeah, I think that it's probably... It's not our most viewed video, but it might be our most well-known. It's definitely, it, it definitely one of the first ones I've watched. It's one of, uh, we've had a couple, I think, that have more views. Um, the the googly-eyed stubby squid <laughs> has a lot. <coughs> it's, a, it's a lot of the little cute things that get a ton of views. Yeah. But the sperm whale is my personal favorite. Sun star, sea star. Bridge nav. One more step, one zero 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 four five. Thank you.
So Fabio, what is the plan after this? Re recover the RV and do a vertical transect to the surface. Not Could in that in yep. not in that order though. <laughs> that would be interesting to do it in that order. Scatter. Hmm. Angry fish. Bully fish. I love this big fat one just hanging out under the porch, just waiting for the one other ones to come by. It just comes out a little bit and comes back in. I've been watching them a little bit. I feel like the fish are trying to guide us to one place, but we're not necessarily listening to them. They're like, come this way. Sorry, fish. This mission is taking us elsewhere. Hard to believe we've only gone a kilometer. Wire. Ooh. Ooh, the fishing scar. Is it? It might be. It's hard to tell. Just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's a view you don't normally see on the satellite. Nope. <laughs> it's a good view, though. Which one? Uh, Atlanta Channel camp. 3. It's the Atlanta Tail Cam. Uh-huh. There's usually nothing interesting there. This is the most interesting yet. I've just been switching between different views of lots of fish. Why not? No, it's good. I don't know how many times I've sat at home watching and I've been like, I want to see them, but manipulator in the box I want to do and like give me all the cameras <laughs> I, I try to switch to the <laughs> the uh, starboard cam whenever manipulators are going in the box so many times I've seen it like they're doing something on the porch or rigging something up but they're zoomed in on a rock yep and it's like I want to see the manipulator <laughs> I'm like the only one wanting that, but... <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit biased in that one. <laughs> Look at that really spotted fish off to the right. Yeah. Pretty... Albino one. Mm. An albino blackfish. Black cod. Sea life is becoming more abundant on the seafloor. 
Yeah, so in one kilometer we made about 100 meters of that range. Variation. Yep, that sounds about right. So hopefully more Brito stars. Brito stars and sea stars and urchins. Patrick! Hey guys! Like I swear, we need to get a star and a sponge and make them oh find SpongeBob <laughs> and uh, so Patrick. Many. Oh my Whoa. god! <laughs> I think we found all of them. Can't even see the bottom here. I'm sorry, Fabio. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> there are so much fish here. Oh, look at Pilot Cam. Pilot Cam. Which one's that one? Is that currently oh. starboard? Oh. Uh, bucket. Yeah, bucket. Currently bucket. bucket. Yeah. It's the same button for me. Look at that. Where are places that look like this in the real world? This is the real world. Uh, Canada. I apparently. mean, um, <laughs> Canada. I'd say H2 on a 4 p.m. <laughs> Friday afternoon. Is that Times Square, New York, when all the people cross this, the street? Where are the streets like packed? Japan and Tokyo. Yep. <laughs> Or else does it look like this and... That was insane though. <clears throat> so much fish. They all came to see Patrick, eh? So instead of white balance, you can fish <laughs> balance. Fish balance. There's so much things on the ground also like... Looks like a lot of brittle stars. Can we just go for another kilometer? Uh, Danny's here for it. <laughs> we actually could. <laughs> <laughs> People down there, they're not very in Pain. a rush to recover, actually. I think he was scheduled for around 10 p.m. Yeah, that's true. 2200 was the last time I saw. Yeah. And it's, it's only, seven. only 1900 at the moment. Oh, you're muted. Almost done with the ship move, and that brings us to a thousand meters. Oh. One okay. thousand meters. So really we can good. conclude this Bentec visual survey. On it. And whenever the ROV is ready. Okay, you ready to call it here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Ooh, what's that off to the right? I know, I was just about to go look at it. Ooh, what is that? Rock and a tin can. can. Tin can. can. Looks like a paint can. Wow. Well, that's an interesting conclusion to our uh, <laughs> Bentex survey. The crab was painting his house. <laughs> wow. Jake, can we get a zoom on that? Yeah. Absolutely, we can. The crab's standing guard. Or maybe it's a nice bucket. That, uh, it looks more like a paint can. It does. I'm gonna call that a paint can. Yeah. Like it's even got paint on the side of it. I mean, as long as we, as much as we know, it could be uh, a bullet. That's I mean, nice. <laughs> cannon shell. Oh, this little arm. How big is that thing? The laser's 10 centimeters. It looks like, without having it directly on the crab, it's hard to tell, but I'd say the body's close to 10, right? Um, well, give me a second here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the body's roughly 10. Yeah. I, mean, I was curious about the yeah. can, but... Maybe maybe 12. That pretty is big spot can. on, lasers. P pretty big uh, crab there. <sighs> yeah, that's an adult tenor crab. Look at this rock. There's so much life on it. There was something else over here, too. Oh, yeah, that. A sponge. Sponge. It's a sponge. What? Hey, what's that crab on the left? Oh, that crab, I mean, uh, sea star on the left. The left? 
Where? On the right was a sea anemone. Another okay. fat one. Oh, that was an anemone? Yeah. Getting a little dusty. Like a pop up. Yep. Fish are like, nope, no more visible for you. Come on. Going wide. I love how this crab just like pinning this fish down. Well, what, what's going on here? Whoa! Uh-oh, I'm having a little tussle. Look at what up. was happening there. <laughs> He's like... Wanted Spike a club. hug? Did, he, did the fish want a hug? Maybe he wanted uh, the dinner that the crab's like sitting there <laughs> hold pinning down with his... Protecting the rockfish. Is he protecting mm. it or is he getting oh, ready to eat that it? That one was going in that an uh, eye. Oh, <laughs> whoa! Oh. The fish have like come to you, like you guys sit are still just now. Like the fish are mischievous today. <laughs> we brought this fish up 100 meters down just to a. Uh, <laughs> the common cause havoc. <laughs> Look, that little rockfish. The rockfish like, is just not happy. He's not happy. <laughs> the crab's not happy. Leave my rock alone. <laughs> that fish just literally just ran straight head first into a rock. <laughs> What is going on here? Bonk. Pure <laughs> chaos. Sure. Like, can we just sit here and watch this? <laughs> what is the plan, Dive Chief Fabio? We're going to do a vertical transect up to the surface. All right. So you're going to see lots of tinophores, I think. Mm, okay. Tinophores. So I guess we got to get our camera in the right angle and all that good stuff. Yeah. Set up the camera yep. for it. We're going up. Get rid to of the end of the porch. tether here. Yep. Let me know when I uh, shut off. When you want me oh. to shut off auto heading. Straight into the ground. Oh! 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 oh we oh, just had one. Oh, that one almost went into the cluster. <laughs> <laughs> he went sideways against the cluster, like he was stuck. Look at this. Flounder. Flounder. All right, you can shut off auto heading. They're trying to convince us not to go. Yeah, they're like, stay with us. Boom. Off bottom. Off bottom. Off bottom. You saying 10 meters a minute? Yeah, 10 meters a minute. 10 meters a minute. Uh, okay, let me just get my stick. Bonk, bonk. Make sure I go the right direction. Okay. Locked in at 10 meters a minute. Post a status. Can you believe it, folks? Our last dive for this particular expedition. And then, where will the next dive be? You must. Dig around on our website and find out more there. Tune in next time on Hercules. Vehicles. And the adventures in the deep. Are ascending <laughs> at <laughs> Barkley Canyon. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted. We're coming up 10 meters a minute. Aye. Shooting Ish. for that. Good. All right. Just the two of us. No, no. I mean, we're a single. Four point five. It's probably going to be probably, a, probably an hour to surface, I think. Forty-five minutes. Okay. It's, one, it's, one, it's one hour. Yeah. yeah. Ten meters a minute going up. Yeah. <laughs> to Hawaii. To Hawaii. Oh, the Hawaii. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Hawaii. Yeah. But we are just five hundred meters. So. Yeah. You're not on mute. Hello. Bridge, Nav. We're coming up off bottom about five zero minutes until recovery. Thank you. <laughs> Is a good speed, Jake? Do you have your that? Yeah. Ten meters a minute. Do we want to stream forward at 400 meters? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Systems look nominal. Nominal. I love that wood. All systems nominal. Even our DCGF. 1.3. Getting better. We just had to work work it through the system, you know. <laughs> I bet we turn that on. It goes right back down. <laughs> that's that's been like that for years. Oh, I bet. I think did we ever we never checked to see the sensitivity on it or calibration on it, did we? We were going to, but we got too baby. Yeah, Trevor. Did, I think like did a on the DC ground fault. Yeah. He, Trevor did like a little test, and he said it. It was. He said he might have been a little bit off, but it's not like hugely off. Like maybe a couple hundred kilo ohms or something. Well, it's obviously on the screen. What? Massive mola mola. Which, uh... Search for the mola mola, Jacob. <laughs> Roger, where is it? I don't know. <laughs> look, for where the know. <laughs> look for where the people are congregating. Might be a clue. I do not see them in that camera view. Let's start with a mid and see what happens. They're not on the back deck, so... They're probably all on the social deck. Social deck, probably. So, starboard side. Let's try starboard. Uh, where are people looking? Yep, starboard side. Here goes Dirk. <laughs> Slight delay on the stop. <laughs> didn't realize you had 360 degrees there. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, there it is. Straight ahead. Zoom. Oh, yeah. By the birds. There's something that jumped out. Yeah, no, that's definitely it because the birds are picking off of it. Yeah. The zoom on these is shockingly impressive. That's awesome. no, the zoom is amazing. Wow. <laughs> What you is can, that? You gotta <laughs> fight it like a, it's a mola mola. That's it. You found I am, it. I am not Ed on the Come stick. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'm not Ed on the stick. <laughs> gotta just fight it. There, fight these it. are. Uh oh, where'd it go? Come on, Ed can do it. <laughs> yeah, Ed's been doing this for. <laughs> I don't know how old, how old they decided he was in the other watch, but a long time. <laughs> no. Back. You just gotta what think is ahead. That? It's a mola mola. What is that? Sunfish. Sunfish. Mm -hmm. it's a big. It's called the sunfish. No. Oh. They like wow. these big blobs that like float with the current. You guys mm -hmm. are looking at it. Cool. We're trying they look, to. They look, look really it. weird if you look it up. You know, it actually looks a whole lot better on this camera than the other one. Than trying to look at it, and it's also super cold outside. Yeah, but now all of our viewers get to see it on satellite feed three. Satellite feed three to see yeah. what's happening outside. The crane now. It's okay, the crane will move. Or maybe. Hang on. Or what if you use uh, the Hercules cam one when Hercules comes up? If it's still there, if it hasn't drifted away. You can't zoom in on center, can you? Uh, you're trying to right now. Yeah, I can. There you go. We have full control over all the... That is so screen. cool. Yeah, unfortunately, it's right in between the goalposts. Oh, wait. I don't have control over the wide-angle one that's stitched together. That's three cameras. Good. 
the two of us. Oh, that one's great. That's a great view. Oh, is that A-frame? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what about wire cam? <laughs> you have to see wire cam, but I don't know. If, but wire cam's not a pin and tilt. Oh, it isn't? No, that's fixed. Delta. Are you good with it? That's you. I'm stuck at 10 meters a minute. I am too. Well, you can move a little bit faster. Or slower. I guess slow slower down, in I this guess. I'm not the only one with that song stuck in my head. Yeah, bro. <laughs> we need a different one.
Or actually, may maybe you could. Oh, Mel and I just pop on now. Uh, so the question is why we no longer have bow cam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately that camera is dead at the moment. We need to get a replacement. Um, being situated up there, it takes a lot of a lot of damage from the the sea spray, and so a lot of the components were very very corroded. Mm. Um, so eventually it just kind of gave out, and we're still waiting on a replacement. Something similar happened to uh, the wire cam um, on the the back of the ship, but we replaced that at the beginning of uh, the transit over from Hawaii. All right. I, I think it died. Yeah, bow cam lasted about 24 yeah. hours on the on on last wire cam. Yeah, it didn't. It no, we didn't kill it. It died. It was already on its That's way out. That's how you state facts without taking blame. It was already on its way you out, know. and the wire cam gets <laughs> beat up pretty well. Yeah, the, that we have the weather. It a, it's the weather. With the wire cam, it is for sure the weather. It takes a beating The weather back there. is harsh, you know, out here. Salt, wind, sun, rain. So much weather. So right now it's in a ballistic housing. This, this housing <laughs> yes. is designed to handle like the most extreme weather and environments possible. And uh, so far, so so far good. it's been pretty good. If anything's gonna go, it's gonna be the Cat6 cable that I put together on my first attempt. <laughs> Blue data on its way. This is this is uh, um, where it's at. I mean, we've got so much blue data right in front of us, and everything's gonna be a okay. Everything is a okay. Thank you. We've got some questions coming in that I need to stay on top of. What headsets are we all using? How do you handle comms? Um, so there's a variety of headsets in use. The majority of them are, I think they're RTS brand, but they're your pretty standard headsets with a microphone coming in in a one ear earphone, kind of go over the head, kind of your normal, like wireless, uh, not wireless, but cordless, handless, that's what I want, hands-free headset. They might see in a lot of offices if you do a lot of um, video calls and stuff. Our comms are primarily on our intercom system, which lets you talk to either the science party line, which is what you hear going out over the streams, or individually to different people in different parts of the ship. So it's kind of all in one system. Thank you for that. You're welcome. What camera is used on Hercules? I I don't know the specifics of the, the model. Is it a Sony something? So, Hercules has what's called an Insight Pacific Zeus Plus. And it is a broadcast grade camera with a very specialized lens um, to get the best video quality we can get, pretty much in the bottom of the from the bottom of the ocean to our monitors. It is a very good camera. It's a hundred thousand dollar plus to camera. Yes, it is. Thank you, Danny. 
Can we ask the chef in the galley what's for dinner? Dinner has been served. Thank you, chef, for... It was delightful. And it, it was ice cream night. And it's ice cream night. It's ending on a high. Mm -hmm. It's been a good cruise. I think it's overall it's been a pretty dang good cruise. I'd agree. I had a great time. Oh, yeah. Definitely we will do it again. You know, <laughs> you saying that, Danny, brings me so much happiness. <laughs> the seeing that happiness on your face um, provides me with light. Like, Aww. so much inspiration there. Mm -hmm. I aim to please. One day, <coughs> I see the currents coming from the starboard side. Is it possible to turn the vehicle into the current or not? Whoa, what is that in Ooh, Atalanta? Oh Atlanta. my okay. god. Wow. That is wild. What is it? Uh, you seeing this? That's a I'm salp. seeing it. Salp. Maybe. Oh, 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 what? Salp. Salp? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> salp is like a primitive chordate organism. Is it related to Awa? To what? <laughs> is that from <laughs> Avatar? <laughs> I had to do a double take for a second. <laughs> <I'm> sure, yeah. <laughs> Talking about the I'm glad a lot of you guys are laughing about avatar. it. <laughs> Salps are tunicates. <clears throat> this is what happens when you put normies in a, in, in a van with science. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fabio. Can you say that one more time? Uh, tunicates? Tunicates. I'm trying to look for the word that you're saying. Oh, tunicate. Ah, oh, salp. It's a bunch of itty bitty things that are connected. Enrica looks very happy right now. <laughs> I think from SPL it is very apparent this is the last dive. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Save. Okay, almost to the surface. Psych, we're going back down. I was promised sleep. Don't break out the champagne yet. Hook's not on deck.
Okay, this question came earlier, but I'm down to answer it again. Um, is everyone going to be returning for the next expedition, or will there be new crew? What's next for you all? I think we could actually talk about also when we're next coming on, if we come on. Future. Anyone? I'll, I'll be on for Papahanaumokuakea in uh, September, but I get off after this cruise. That pronunciation was so good. Really? Thank you. I'm wearing the shirt, so I'd be pretty embarrassed if I pronounced it wrong. Happiness. Looks good. I'm getting off. With no, no plans to come out for the remainder of this season, but definitely next season. Thank you, Jacob. I have several cruises with uh, all of the Lukai coming up, and then I will be back next season. That's exciting. Hey, check us out. All of the Lukai. R O V Lukai. Check out. University of Hawaii's vehicle. We do live streaming as well. Just not as fan. Not as not as fun. We don't do a live SPL chat like this, which is kind of sad. But we just don't have the manpower. It takes it takes a lot. It, it definitely does. takes a lot. <laughs> it does take a lot. <clears throat> and then Lynette. Yeah, um, I'm sticking around until the end of August. So I'll be on the transit back to Hawaii and the cruise after that around Johnston Atoll. Do you guys get to get off at Johnston? No. Okay. Yeah, kind of a bummer. That'd be cool. Do they even have a dock? I think they must. I mean, like a probably like a service dock or something, but I don't know yeah. if they would be able to handle. Yeah, they must have some sort of pier, but I don't know what size ships they can handle. That'd be cool is to stop but uh, go into Midway. Mm. <laughs> that would be cool. <coughs> During uh, Papahanao Moku okay. I like this question, if it's still okay. I think we're still okay to ask questions, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> Most memorable moment of this trip, wrapping up. The jellyfish. Last night, the jellyfish? Yeah. Last night, jellyfish was pretty amazing. I mean, my most memorable moment was actually flying Hercules, but visually, the jellyfish. Probably the, the hydrothermal vent at uh, Dante, Dan that tower, that was something. You did an amazing job getting that uh, footage, though, that was of the, uh, the, um, the flange pool. Oh, the flange pool? pool? Yeah. That was a hard one. True pilot skills. Thank you for sharing. What about you, Jacob? Um, either the hydrothermal vents as a whole or seeing the dolphins. I don't think I've ever seen wild dolphins before of any sort. So seeing them off the ship was very, very cool. Seeing them jump and play and do their, do their mm. thing. 
Luika. <clears throat> Two moments, actually, one serious and one ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> serious is uh, indeed joining the Flinch Pool team, the, the liquid in liquid mm -hmm. at Endeavor. That was pretty stunning. <laughs> the ridiculous one. Um, just after getting up in the bathroom, seeing a doll from the front of the window of the bash washroom. <laughs> Thank you. Memories to be made. Mm -hmm. Kind of feels like summer camp, you know? It has a vaguely summer camp vibe. <laughs> <clears throat> Are the ROVs neutral buoyant, requiring the thrusters to push up and down? They're slightly positively buoyant, so that we thrust upwards to stay down. Oh, Hercules is. Yes, Atlanta Hercules is heavy. Atlanta is just a big old clump weight. Um, but yeah, Hercules is, we ballast it to stay just positively buoyant so that it would float to the surface if anything were to go wrong. Similar to what happened when we lost the vehicles several seasons ago. Um, Hercules was buoyant when we lost communications. We lost tether. I mean, lost a uh, 6 8 cable. And then when it was cut, it was released and popped up to the surface. Yeah, but Argus was like a giant anchor and kept it on the bottom. Yep, Argus was like an anchor. Unlike Luukai, who was slightly negative by about three pounds and just sat on the bottom. Happy as a clam for 45 days. Dang. Lynette, did you share your most mem memorable moment yet? I'm sorry if uh, I forgot. I didn't. Um, oh. I don't know. A couple of firsts for me on this cruise. It was my first hydrothermal vents. Mm -hmm. So that's always exciting. Same, and my Z's. first albatross. Oh. So also exciting. Yeah, the hydrothermal vents, that's something I definitely want to do again. Uh, awesome sauce. Mola, mola. Mola, mola, mola. Where is Argus now? Hawaii. All right. Yep, sitting in Bay 2 at the UH Marine Center. Is Argus retired? Not no. yet. No, not yet. Just on vacation.
Good question. Will Dr. Ballard be joining any of the expeditions this year? That I do not know the answer to. I believe so. Yeah, he always comes out for one or two. I believe he's on... Is it Johnston? No. Whichever one is in uh, October, I believe he'll be on. But I cannot remember off the top of my head. He's he's not going on Papa now, Moko okay? Care? I I do not know. I thought was that was what he was one of the ones that they were he was interested in because of uh, the archaeology. Oh, is that when that one is? Is that on Papa now? I, I kind of remember that one now. I'm going to go look at the expedition list, and I'm going to try and guesstimate which one. Well, actually, I'll tell you guys which ones are, are in October. October 1 through 19 is OECI multi-vehicle exploration, and then ocean exploration through advanced imaging I is... I believe he's on that one. Cool. October 22 to November 5. If you want to find out more about this information, it's... Available for you all at nautiluslive.org backslash x or forward slash expeditions forward slash It was really awesome seeing everybody fly Hercules this morning. The the joy in their faces was it. Seeing people happy makes me happy. It's a good quality. You know, we had a little bit of a rough start of this cruise, but overall I think it's been a very successful cruise. That was more of nature's fault than anyone else's. Uh, that and Hercules wasn't behaving very well. Well, there was that as well. I was trying to, you know, give everyone the benefit. Robotics are difficult, especially when you send them to the bottom of the world. That's fair. I really enjoyed learning how to play bugs. <laughs> Okay, back to work.
five meters to all stop. All stop, seven five meters. Still bright out, isn't it? Mm. Not that bright. Lynette, can you secure this on I think it'll launch in recovery. No, it's already on it. I don't see Dan down there, do you? Um, what is our current ascent rate? Uh, at this stage, or just, I'm just coming up as fast as the winch is coming up. Okay, that means somewhere in between we stop the transect. Yeah, the transect stops at 100 meters. Yeah. 100, okay, thank you. Recovery mode.
Hercules lining up uh, in between the A-frame. Roger. Boom, co-posts. the birds flock to Hercules. <laughs> well, probably reeks of fish. <laughs> probably. They're gonna they're gonna lose a toe. <laughs> Claw, talon, whatever it is. Beak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adelanta secure. Hercules, drive forward, please. Roger. Driving ahead. Guess Dan didn't make an appearance. What? Oh, Dan's not down there. Unless he's hiding in the hangar. There he is. Hiding in the hangar. Go ahead, Dak. You go ahead and start the timer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there, there he goes. I don't know. He's not. He's not. You know. You gotta. You gotta reach out farther than that. You know. It's just. He's just. <laughs> yeah, I think so. 
I uh, interest interesting tactic there, but Yeah, you gotta add like ten seconds, ten second penalty. Drive forward, please. I am. Roger. We have a uh, wrap, so if you guys can just keep her driving forward, please. Roger. What? And go ahead and stop time. Time is stopped. Uh, it is currently, yes. Should it not be? Uh, during recovery and launch, it is, yes. I can take it off if you would like. <laughs> 